Good morning. I am very happy that you all are here. Hope you have had a good week. If you remember, two weeks ago, we started a series of lessons on James. Staying in the first chapter of James, and we talked about, first of all, whether it being a Christian, we were better Christians or we became bitter Christians. We learned that we're all going to go through temptations and trials and that sometimes we try to run away from those trials and tribulations. But we need to always remember that God will help us with them. We then talked about wisdom. Have we got wisdom? We learned that wisdom comes only from God and that if we ask that he will liberally give it to us. This morning we continue that study and we'll be talking about what do we own. Our lesson text this morning will be coming from James chapter 1 verses 9 through 14. And I hope you can see it, but it's starting in chapter 9 of James chapter 1. And there the first few verses are talking about the perspective of rich and poor it said, let the lowly, the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. The next verses talk about loving God under trials. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Kind of at first glance, you might think that this may sound irrelevant, but it actually is complementary to the original text at the beginning of the book because he tells us there that blessed is the man who has trials and temptations. Money, though, is one of those things that's listed in the opening part of that chapter of chapter one as one of the things that can cause trials and can also cause double mindedness in a person. And remember, we're still talking on the theme of temptation. If you look at first Timothy chapter six and verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some uh, coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. There are three things that I want to discuss this morning concerning temptations and talking about us as we endure temptations. The first one is the brother of low degree can rejoice because he has been lifted up and the rich rejoice in that he has been made low. How can this be? You ever thought about that? How can this possibly be? The wisdom of the world though is foolishness to God. That is why Jesus tells us that he came not to be ministered to, but to minister. In Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28, But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them but it shall not be 
so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. God's logic cannot be understood by the logic of this world. That is why Jesus tells us the first shall be last, the greatest shall be the servants. The second thing that we need to look at is we don't own anything anyway. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. You know, money just doesn't last. And money is really not what life is all about. And I think we need to ask ourselves the question, what do we really own anyway? What do we really own? What happens? What happens to your car when you pass away? What happens to all of the land that you own when you pass away? What happens to your home when you pass away? What do we really own? All of these gifts have been given to us by God. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust thus corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And here's the verse that really makes the difference. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. First Timothy chapter 6 verses 17 and 19. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. And the third thing that we want to discuss this morning is we are blessed when we endure. Go back to James chapter 1, and we read this verse already in verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Blessed is that man that endures the temptation. For he is tried, and he shall receive the crown of life that the Lord had promised him. God's word says blessed is the man. God's word tells us that blessed is the man that endures temptations rather than tries to evade them or avoid them. We have to remember that the world would have us to believe that trials and tragedies are curses from God. That we're cursed by God when we have trials and testings and temptations. But you know what? It's the complete opposite. It's the complete opposite. Think about Job. What about Job when he was going through all of his trials and tribulations? What did his friends tell him? What did his friends tell him? Tell him to curse God? He said, you can't be going through all these things. And I tell you, there's probably not of any of us that have gone through all of the things that Job went through. But he held fast to his love for the Lord. 
He stood firm. But the world told him, you need to curse God and die. Brethren, God wants us to be better Christians. He wants us to be strong Christians and not bitter Christians. We as Christians are not to look for ways out of trials and testings, but to look for what God wants us to learn from them because there are lessons to be learned in those temptations. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, if you have your Bibles, turn to that particular verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 16. He's kind of telling them, the children of Israel, you need a reminder. You need a wake-up call because he says, who fed you in the wilderness with manna? Who gave you the manna which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end? The Lord talking to them telling them that, listen, you need to remember where this manna came from. And if you remember, didn't the children of Israel grumble about the manna? They had a certain time. They had to collect it and only so much, and they could only have enough for the day. And they grumbled and like they wanted something else. But he says the Lord is trying to test you to, so that you will do good in the end brethren there are things to be learned from our trials and temptations god's ultimate goal god's ultimate goal for us as christians is to be humble and to be just like his son his goal for you and i as christians is to be humble and to be just like his son just like david said that he was a man after God's own heart. He was a man seeking to have a heart like God. And that should be our goal as well. If you listen to our midweek lesson, we talked about staying focused, staying looking toward Christ, and making sure that that is the important thing that's in our life. We develop, brethren, life is precious. And life is uncertain. Today is the day that we have. The time that we have is now. We're not promised tomorrow. We make all kinds of plans. I had plans to go play golf with a dear, dear friend of mine in North Carolina on the 18th of this month. We had to put it off a year ago because of the pandemic. We had to put it off again. Thursday morning, I received a phone call. They told me that Mike had been eating breakfast with his wife, <clears throat> making plans for the day. He told her that he would go to our facility in Greensboro, North Carolina, but he was going to stay at home long enough to take a conference call. He began profusely sweating, passed out and fell on the floor. They took him to the hospital. By ambulance, they had to stop on the way to get his pulse back. They gave him a heart cat and found that his heart was strong. 
but they also found that he had many, many blood clots in his lungs. Mike died on the table. Brethren, we are not promised any other time but what we have. We should stay focused on Christ and live the day as best that we can for him. If you're here this morning, you've never named his name, today would be a good day to do that. To be buried in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. But if you are here, you have fought your temptations. You've blamed God for them. You've had troubles. God tells us we're going to have them. We come and ask for his forgiveness and take up your place as his child again and strive hard to live a Christian life. If you have need of the invitation, won't you come while together we stand and sing? Jesus, blood, 